happening all over the world. FIFA have inaugurated a World Cup for women. The 1989 European Championship in West Germany attracted huge crowds. It seems that women have been playing football for as long as men. There were mob games for women in the 16th century. They played by association rules as early as the 1890s. It was more often the sensibilities of men about women playing the game, rather than reluctance on the part of women themselves, that prevented them being more active participants. Despite the prejudice, women's football flourished in the north of England at the turn of the century. The experiences of working women during the First World War produced a camaraderie which strengthened the game. In 1921, a French team, Feminine Essay, toured England. They attracted crowds of over 50,000 and played 18 matches. same year. While they were in mid-Atlantic, the male authorities intervened. The English FA banned women's football. Canada cancelled the tour. Dick Kerr's 11 played on where they could, raising money for charity. Women's football continued sporadically in Europe, with occasional international matches. But without regular competition, the standards of play didn't develop as they might have done. In Czechoslovakia, women's football was better organized. It was played in schools, factories and offices. Full international competitions arrived in 1982 with the first European Championship. In the third tournament in 1989, West Germany overcame Norway in the final, but Norway had had an even more significant success the year before. The first global tournament of women's football was held in China in June 1988. Norway met Sweden in the final. A goal from Linda Madeline gave Norway the first women's world title. In the United States, girls are given equal priority with boys in playing football. Youth training methods recognize that girls can develop their skills just as readily as boys. FIFA are committed to the development of the women's game. Perhaps these new attitudes will allow women more prominence in the people's game. It's been a long journey, but what does the future hold for the people's game? Later on this afternoon, right now, I can't do it. It'll be in an hour or so. The critical decisions which determine the direction football will take are made in Zurich at the headquarters of FIFA. Enfim, procuramos com a nossa presença, tanto nos países em every country and through our meetings, to take everyone into account. Aquilo que o futebol mais deseja, we try to make the decisions which will allow football to continue its growth do, e, and show the world that it is the ideal é sport, mais a sport that e que toca mais profundamente a todas as massas. La FIFA doit prendre un rôle de direction dans ce football. Le football étant le jeu le plus universel au monde, joué par des centaines de milliers de personnes, des millions de personnes, dont 100 millions, enregistrés par les associations nationales et des clubs, mais en tout cas trois fois plus qui jouent du football non totalement organisé, la FIFA doit prendre le lead absolu pour le football. 
Since Dr. Havelange became president in 1974, FIFA has successfully launched a world championship for under 16s and under 20s, a World Cup for women, and awarded more places for Africa, Asia, and North America in the Senior World Cup. Avalanche has also hinted that the World Cup in 2002 may be staged in Asia, in China, Japan or Korea. However, the people's game is not without its problems. Et plus, ce que nous devons faire pour le football, c'est de lui préparer un environnement meilleur que ce qu'il est maintenant. Ça veut dire que nous, nous devons lui donner des stades et des terrains d'entraînement qui correspondent au monde moderne que nous vivons, qui assure le confort et la sécurité. des Costières, on the outskirts of Nîmes in the south of France. It's one of the most futuristic stadiums in the world, and at a cost of 20 million pounds, is showing the way ahead. Situated next to a main highway just outside the city, and with parking for 2,500 cars, it has an all-seated capacity of more than 30,000. and it leads the way in anti-hooligan devices and safety features. This fence is designed to prevent the kind of disaster which happened at Hillsborough, England, when spectators were crushed against the perimeter fencing. For the world's leading clubs, football in the 1990s means big business. Barcelona, with 108,000 members, is the biggest club in the world. They can afford to buy the best players from anywhere in the world. Television is playing an increasingly important role. Football is becoming the greatest show on earth. The biggest television audience in sport is generating the money that spawned the idea for a Super League for the top European clubs. It's the brainchild of TV moguls like Silvio Berlusconi, president of Milan, and his opposite number at Marseille, Bernard Tapi. No one in the world loves a great show more than the Americans. The home of American football could so easily have chosen association football instead. British sailors are thought to have introduced European football to the Americas 400 years ago by playing a team of native Inuits on the west coast of Greenland. Sailors from the Hudson Bay Company are known to have kicked a ball around with the Inuit in the 18th century. 
However, the most significant period in the development of the game occurred in the Ivy League colleges in the United States in the 1870s. In 1869, the University of Princeton played nearby Rutgers College in the very first intercollegiate football match. They played a variation of the association rules, drawn up in 1863 in London. But not all the colleges favoured the kicking game. Harvard had had a series of matches against McGill University of Montreal in 1874. McGill played the handling game. Harvard were impressed. The following year, Harvard met Yale for the first time. They played by rules which favoured handling. Yale liked the new code, as did Princeton, who sent observers. America had chosen the handling game. American football was born. Since then, what Americans prefer to call soccer has remained a minority sport. There have been some successes. Galt FC from Canada won the Olympic title in 1904. It wasn't until the arrival of Pele in 1975 that the American public saw the potential of soccer for the first time. He scores! The North American Soccer League may have offered us a glimpse into the future. start again from the bottom this time the US Soccer Federation is approaching the future with much more care individuals thought well if we have uh, big-time sports in the United States in other sports we can do the same thing with soccer but that's not true we have to do it methodically and have to be patient and do things at the right time the game now has a strong base. Millions of young Americans are playing soccer. In some schools, soccer has even displaced the traditional American games. Now, it has the big one to look forward to. The World Cup in 1994. At least for most Americans. Oh, soccer. Great. Good. I, did, I never heard it called the World Cup. <laughs> I think it's great. I think America should be more, more involved in soccer. It's a lot more fun. It's definitely cool. The national team is playing in front of bigger and ever more knowledgeable crowds. Et ce football doit être caractérisé par la joie qu'il le procure et non pas la lutte contre la violence. I see the game in the next 15, 20 years changing beyond all recognition as we know it. I firmly believe that in my lifetime soccer will be the number one sport in America. I think this wonderful game of ours will live forever. The people's game has come a long way.